Hi, for this free tech tip, we'll be looking at hydrodynamic and wave loading simulation. And here are two examples. Uh, on one, you see the simulation of this boat actually traveling through rough seas. And another one, where you can see uh, this oil rig platform being impacted by a massive wave. Now, before we start, I wanted to remind you that ANSYS offers a complete range of solutions for simulation of offshore application. You may be dealing with slender bodies, where we could be using ANSYS Mechanical. If you're only looking at a global assessment of large body dynamics on uh, sea surface, for example, you can use ANSYS Aqua. Or if you need detailed assessment of response to complex wave loading, you can use ANSYS Fluent or a combination of ANSYS Fluent and ANSYS Aqua. But in this free tech tip, we'll be looking at a detailed assessment of the response to a complex wave loading using ANSYS Fluent. And we'll be using the example of this offshore platform impacted by the wave. And the question we have is, what is the wave load on the pillar? Really, what we're going to determine are for the different column and deck the actual force of the wave as a function of time. And at the same time, we'll also be looking at green water phenomena. Basically, we want to predict to see if the wave will actually hit the decks. Here you see the geometry of the platform and you can see we actually included all the detail. You can see the derrick, you can see the helipad, you can see some of the tank that are located on platform, etc. And I selected a polyhedral mesh in this case and as you can see the surface mesh really high quality surface mesh and actually all the detail of the geometry are captured. You can see the derrick is captured and even when you look at the steps or the railing you see that those uh, geometrical details are really nicely captured by this polyhedral mesh. Now for this simulation I will be using the multiphase volume of fluid or VOF model and that is actually the model you use anytime you want to track a surface between two phase. Obviously in this case we're going to track the surface between the water phase and the air phase. So I select volume of fluid, I have a obviously two phases and I also select open channel flow and open channel wave boundary condition because I will input a wave. Now it's time to actually select the two phases. One will be air and the other one will be water and of course the material properties are already predefined from the library of material inside Fluent. Now something I really wanted to show is actually the velocity inlet because as I told you we're going to input uh, the wave and that's exactly what we're doing here. So what we're going to do is actually give first the free surface level and bottom level uh, quantity. That basically means that we have 54 meters of uh, sea depth and we're actually going to input uh, and use a shallow wave. We're going to have one wave use the fifth order solitary wave theory, define its height, length, etc. Now here is an option I really like. Those wave theory are complicated. So I actually go in the boundary condition uh, section and I will do a quick check. And actually what Fluent is doing here for me is looking at my input for the wave and actually checking everything. And you can see that the check actually passed and it's telling me that the selected wave theory is applicable for this application. Now, of course, this is a transient simulation. So next step is to select my time step. I can obviously use a fixed time step, but depending upon the numerics you use, you could be using a variable time step. And in this case, it's always a good idea to check if variable time step is available. Why? Because by just determining and inputting a limited amount of input, you can actually have the time step being selected automatically. And once the simulation is completed, I go to CFD post in order to 
create the animation of the simulation and here we see the result we really see the wave that is actually going and impacting the offshore structure and we see that we have green water phenomena which is that the water actually reaches the deck level and of course what I can do also in CFD post is record the force as a function of time of the water on the column the deck etc Thanks for listening to this tech tip and of course we have many more and many more material available for you in our technology tip page. Simply go to NC's Computational Free Dynamics webpage and look for the technology tips under CFD Technology Leadership. Thank you.